The French Mirage 2000D R1 brings a new ground attack jet to War Thunder. Let's check it out. After the general success of the Mirage 2000 as a fighter, the French set out to refine the type into a dedicated strike jet. The 2000N, which first flew in 1986, was a medium-range, high-speed attack jet intended to replace the Mirage 4 in the French Air Force as its primary nuclear delivery bomber. To fill this role, a lot of changes were made to the basic design. To fit a second crew member, it was based on the trainer version of the Mirage 2000, a new inertial navigation system was developed, enhanced electronic countermeasures were installed, and it was fitted with plumbing for underwing drop tanks. These were generally seen as successful changes, and the jet was further refined into the Mirage 2000D, which first flew in 1991 and was more specialized for non-nuclear conventional ground attack with the flexibility for strategic or tactical bombing. The jet had only minor modifications from the 2000N, mostly to add compatibility with a wider range of non-nuclear ordnance. The R1 version, which came first, was later refined into the Mirage 2000D R2, which was compatible with an even wider range of weapons and had further upgraded electronic countermeasures. The plane was never exported, with France being the only operator, but it saw combat service in a number of conflicts that France was involved in. During the war in Afghanistan, the Mirage 2000D was used extensively to provide close air support on short notice with its laser-guided bombs. The plane is still in service with France, and a refit program is expected to keep them operational into the mid-2030s. What we get in War Thunder is the Mirage 2000D R1, a French jet fighter in rank 8 with a battle rating of 11.3. Keep in mind, this jet is currently classified as a fighter and not as a strike aircraft. The Mirage 2000D carries the Thompson CSF RDI radar set, the same as the fighter version of the plane. This is an advanced multi-mode pulse Doppler radar with multiple dish angles, track wall scan mode, all aspect head-on mode, and an ACM boresight function. The plane also has a full ballistics computer for its air-to-ground weapons, a radar warning receiver, and a supply of countermeasures. As a special note, if you take the countermeasures, it'll block your landing chute from deploying, so keep that in mind. When carrying a targeting pod, the plane also features an auto tracker. For weapons, the plane has no cannons. Yep. But it does get a pretty comprehensive selection of external ordnance, including dumb bombs, air to air missiles, rocket pods, laser guided bombs, and anti tank missiles. Its air to air missile is the R 550 Magic 2. This is an all aspect IR missile with 35 Gs of pull. It's a highly competitive weapon, but it isn't quite as long range as most of the other top tier missiles. The D model can also take four different types of laser guided bombs. Critically, it can only take one unless you go for the GBU 12s, which frankly are tiny and can be difficult to score kills with. My personal preference is usually the BGL 1000, the black one. Lastly, you can take the ASL 30 laser-guided anti-tank missile. This thing is probably my favorite air-to-ground weapon in the game. It's accurate, has good range, about 10 to 12 kilometers against a stationary target, and it packs a good warhead. Now, as I've shown in a few of my other videos, the AS-30L absolutely can be used against air targets, but at the top tier, this is significantly more difficult than it's worth, since the weapon only has 6 Gs of pull, and basically anything can dodge it with no effort. Plus, no proximity fuse, so you need a direct hit. Just stick to tank busting. The flight performance of the Mirage 2000D is quite good, and it's pretty close to identical to the Mirage 2000C fighter version. The acceleration is pretty strong, rate of climb is excellent, and its agility is top-notch. But... The external weapons impact maximum speed a bit more than the 2000C, so it's going to be a bit slower at low altitude in terms of, like, overall top speed. 
The plane has leading-edge slats on the wings that reduce its energy bleed and tight turns compared to other pure delta wing designs, which make it quite maneuverable in turning dogfights and can help it retain energy a lot better than people are going to expect. There are some notes with its flight performance. It has a low altitude wing rip speed of around 1350 kilometers an hour, and it can fly itself apart in level flight if you crank the afterburner without an external loadout. If you fly out with just the Magic 2 missiles, you have to watch your speed when using the afterburner, and the jet won't hit an aerodynamic wall until after its rip speed, and its acceleration remains good throughout the entire power curve. Really, watch your airspeed, unless you take the bombs of the targeting pod, in which case the extra drag can actually be your friend, at least in terms of preventing wing rips. Now, the plane can take a drop tank, but doing so is going to consume the centerline pylon, which is where the laser-guided bombs would go, so my own suggestion is only to worry about the drop tank in air battle EC maps with a dumb bomb loadout. This jet isn't as thirsty as most of the other top-tier aircraft, and frankly, you probably don't need the drop tank at all 90% of the time. Now, unlike its flight performance, taking this jet into combat is totally different than its brother over in the fighter line. If you fly into air battles, your usual mission is going to be taking the dumb bombs and attacking bases. Notably, a full load of dumb bombs can take out a strategic base in Air RB with a pretty regular drop profile. For example, a horizontal bombing pass using the CCRP. But, if you swap in the two outboard missiles, you're going to need a full direct hit on the base with all of the bombs, and even then, sometimes it won't be enough. My recommendation is to use a little bit more of a vertical diving attack with the CCIP. It'll be a little bit more accurate. Now, you can fly this out as a fighter and try to focus on attacking air targets with the R-550s, but you only get two of them and no cannons. So it's just two shots, then your T-44 and basically defenseless. The AS-30 can be used against air targets, but again, it's much more difficult at the top tier, and my suggestion is just stick with the ground pounding. Worry about air targets after you've dumped some bombs. Go get those points. Now, flying in a close air support with this jet can really be a lot of fun, and there's some good news. If you take just the laser-guided bomb and the targeting pod without the R-550s or the AS-30Ls, it's actually pretty cheap to get into this in terms of spawn points. The only thing that's going to hold you back, for the most part, is the limited quantity of the guided weapons in the loadout. Your mission profile is pretty frequently going to be an immediate side climb, hunt for a target, drop one bomb, and then fly home. The most you can do are three shots if you take an LGB and the pair of AS-30Ls. Of course, you can use the dumb bombs with the CCIP or unguided rocket attacks, but just be aware that getting in close at top tier is usually just begging for death. Now, one important caveat is that as of making this video, the rendering distance on friendly nameplates is shorter than the max rendering distance you can find targets with in the targeting pod. So be careful or you'll pop friendlies without knowing it. This seems to be a worse problem since the update, so let's hope that gets patched soon. Visually, this is a great looking jet. It's just different enough from the single seat Mirage 2000 to look interesting, and it's got that fast angular shape that still looks amazing. By default, you get a pretty standard French paint job, or a desert paint job, and both look pretty good. Landing the Mirage 2000D is pretty easy, with a couple of caveats. Taking countermeasures is going to block the landing chute, so you're going to have a longer landing run than some other jets. But past that, just make sure to drop gear below around 425 kilometers an hour, and you're going to be fine. Overall, the landing is simple, since you get useful air brakes and a strong engine, which makes managing the speed pretty basic. Now, the cockpit in this jet is really good. It's 
beautifully detailed on the inside. It's got a moving map display in a great location and a useful heads-up display. The radar scope is a bit lower than I prefer and no visible radar warning receiver, but the visibility is pretty good for a two-seater. Overall, good cockpit. To close out on the Mirage 2000D R1. This jet has a good radar set and a full ballistics computer, along with an adequate supply of countermeasures. It can carry a good selection of guided air-to-ground weapons, including the excellent AS-30L, and it doesn't take too many spawn points to fly it out compared to some other cast jets. However, it doesn't have an internal cannon. Its quantity of those good weapons is kind of low, and it has a very limited mission profile when you actually fly it out. The final verdict on the Mirage 2000D is that this jet is great at what it does, but there are arguably better options lower in the tech tree. It's worth having it unlocked, but it might not be something that you scramble to grind out as a priority. As always, thanks for watching.